Detroit Nation, welcome back. All Things Pistons, episode, I think we're episode eight. Is that eight? right? Or yep. Eight. I'm yes. sorry. The Kobe eight. That's the uh, <laughs> that's the unstoppable Kobe. But we're yes, not sir. here to talk about Kobe. We're here Pistons. Um, yeah, man, we're back for another episode. Um, some good things to cover this week, you know, with the just the gameplay that we've seen uh, as of recent. Touch on a couple things there. So we might as well jump right into it. Do a little recap from... Um, the game the other night, man. What an exciting game that man, was. Man, and we needed it. I just want to say, like, after that road trip where we were just balling out, we beat Denver and Utah back-to-back games. We looked like we're figuring things out. Then we came back home, and it's like, did we just revert to trash again? Like, what, what happened? happened? <laughs> where did this energy go? Right. So, like, as soon as – yeah, after this game, I was like, thank God it wasn't a fluke. Yeah. <laughs> And it was one of those games, man, to watch. It was just so exciting. Like, they were in it yeah. the whole time from the get. You're going against, you know, arguably arguably one of the the best player in the league uh, with Luka. And to play the way we played without Cade is, I mean, the future is looking beautiful. Man. I don't care what anybody says. We know we're not winning it this year. So, it's like, you know, I know we talk, I. I know I say that every week. Chill out. Like this <laughs> is this is awesome to watch. Yeah, this is fun for sure. Like I don't mind when we're in games like this and we're this young, like that's all I want. <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent. Just compete. Cause we'll get there no matter what. Yeah, and to see, you know, guys like Bagley just I mean, he put in work against uh old Christian Wood that we wanted to pay the whole city with. Yeah. Um it, it, it was nice to see him play well. It's nice to see, you know, um, Stu didn't really have a great game. Um, I mean, he still had 9 and 12, I think it was, or 9 and 10 or something like that. Yeah. Uh, just to see those guys playing good together. But, like, I mean, can we talk about the superstar on the floor on that game? Right. I mean, where, where are the haters <laughs> at? Man. I mean, that guy – Put, I mean, he made himself look just like a vet out there. He did. He, yeah, his like, like if you look at some of the shots he was taking, like they weren't even open Killian shots. Like, no, he's got, yeah, he, he was seeing the, the palm of people's hands and just yanking them from three. Like, it and was crazy. And you're in the talking clutch. About, yeah, in the clutch, <laughs> yes, in overtime, yeah. going into overtime. And against the best player in the league, that's yeah. got to bring. I mean, obviously, you want kids where it's going to bring out the best in you, no matter who you go against. But the hate he has been getting, he showed it. Like he showed me For something. Sure. I was like, "Wow, man, that is just the shot was hitting the the creating shots, the finding the open the open teammates." Bagley, him and Bagley were working out together. That's yeah. Like he was involved in almost down the stretch, like involved in every play, whether passing defense or scoring, like right. He was making an impact. And it, it was, got to and it was fun to watch. Like it got to the point where like it went to overtime and they were like, get it in his hands. Let like, him close the game. I got bogey, <laughs> this great score. Right. Ivy's back. Um, I don't have the reputation of a score, but like I'm looking these guys off and I'm I'm going to work. Yeah. It's time for the work. Luca, who? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't right. know. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Yeah. Luka, who? That's, it was that's a good still game, that guy. Sure. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, he, um, it just made me more like, and it, I think we're a couple of the few. I know there's fans out there that love Killian, but me and you have been riding the Killian train from day one. Like, nope, this guy yeah. is, there's something there. The way he plays defense was enough for me. Yeah. Um, but to see that, I was like, okay, all <laughs> right, crazy. I can handle that. So that goes into another topic to where do you think, what does it look like going forward once we do get healthy? Can he start um, with Ivy and Cade out there? Is that is that a possibility for uh, Killian to re- maybe run the point? And I mean, what do, what do you, how do you set it up, right? Because it's my thoughts for the future because i mean most likely unless k comes back soon we're looking at next season right 
my thoughts, if Killian continues this, like, I mean, I don't expect him dropping 20 points a game, but if he can stay around like 12, six and four or somewhere around there and keeps playing his great defense, like how do you not at least look at it? Like I would probably go Killian Ivy Kate at the three, which he might get out muscled at times, but like he's going to have his advantage too. And now Cade's not guarding the best guard. So he's right. He was looking burned out. Like before he got hurt, he was balling out. And then the fourth quarter, he looked kind of tired. So when you're carrying that kind of load, like Killian's guarding the best uh, offense, offensive guard. So that takes that burden off Cade. Um, you got three ball handlers in at once that can all pass. Like yes. they're, they're all great. And defensively Stewart's good he's a good rebounder he's stretching the floor now so if he's in at four and I'm assuming at some point this season or I'm picketing fire Casey Duran should be starting at some point <laughs> so like you got Stu and Duran <laughs> holding it down on defense too plus Killian I'm like does that yeah. lineup have a weakness it really um, does it yeah it really does, and there's so many different ways you can go with that lineup, right? Obviously, the top three. Um, I agree with uh, even Kate at the at the three. I think that does a lot for his game, offensively, defensively, and keeping him out of foul trouble. When he's starting, for whatever reason, I don't I, I don't know the exact uh, stats on the fouls. I'll have to look that up because I'm curious. Um, he picks up so many dumb fouls at stupid points when he's guarding the best guard out there. So like take him out of that position to let him be a score. He's a good, great defender. He's six, eight. It's not like, yeah, he might get bodied a little depending on who's at that three. But if we're out and running, you got Killian at the one Ivy at the two, him at the three. And it's also one of those things like, um, Juwan Howard basketball at Michigan. It's positionless basketball. Yeah. It doesn't matter who brings it up. Whoever gets it, let's go, let's run, get down the floor, get it done. And I just think that's – and, you know, and with the – you were saying Stu and, and Duran, which I don't understand uh, why Duran is not getting enough minutes. I feel like it's – it doesn't make yeah. sense to me, I guess. This, I right. just don't get it. Like but Bagley's I would, been balling out, but, like, there's yes. still enough minutes somewhere. Like, finding yeah. the minutes. Figure it out. I don't care what you got to do. Figure it out. Um, and I wouldn't mind seeing, you know, Bagley and Duran with those three out there because I love what Stewart's doing. And Stewart at the four is just that's that's his position. Five is yeah. not it. He can't do it. It's it's not it's not that he can't, it's just not gonna work out to his his game set yeah. and what he can give. In the long run, he will be a much better four for sure. Especially. 1, I think he's shooting 35% from three on the season. And yeah. he struggled the first few games. So, I mean, that's great. Right. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Yeah, and he that and that's the one thing I love about, like, could that open up if he did go to that second lineup to spread the floor a little bit, a little bit more and let him kind of do his thing? Because, um, you know, if he's on that first lineup, it's not – he's the fifth option or the, you know, the fourth option at best to get shots or – and obviously, we don't have Isaiah Stewart for you know putting up shots. That's not why we yeah. picked him up. Yeah, that's not that's not his job. Um, so it's just it's you know all these scenarios, everything we talk about is just it's so exciting and fun to watch to see the growth. Yeah, we're five and whatever. The record doesn't. I don't even look at that anymore because it's 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 fun to watch these guys grow into those positions at the ages they're at to think about sure. like next year or even the year after, I know it's so far out and everybody's sick of saying, how long are the Pistons and saying next year's it, you know <laughs> what I mean? But it's, <laughs> it's always next year, but yep. think about, think about that. The, the money that he had to clear in the contracts and players that he had to come in and clean up. I don't even think about like, that next year thing isn't a thing for me anymore because of, I mean, he had to clean up a dumpster fire of yeah, contracts for sure. And so uh, it's, I just realized on a side note, um, 
we have a player option or team option on Burks next year for ten million. That's it. Like, who can you find in the NBA that can get you a 17, 20 points a game that's willing to come off the bench, plays defense, ball right. handler for ten million dollars? <laughs> And shooting like, almost forty percent from three point line, like the dude is. Man, I love his game. I, I'm glad we. I I hope he's here for the run. Like I hope he's here for when we go, you know, compete in the East and win a championship. Because I love that dude. That dude is. Yeah. yeah he's great. Sure. Like, people say, let's go get a young future piece, but I mean, you're what are you gonna get? That's better than Burks for ten million. <laughs> Like, right, exactly. No, you're not. You're there's no such thing. And it's funny because we talked about that last week about um, you know, trading bay. Like, what are we gonna do? Go get another young guy? How many yeah. young guys are we gonna stash on the bench? <laughs> For real. It's time to start thinking about like, okay, these are the young guys we're running with. Let's start filling with the other pieces with some veterans that can grow them. And you know, Burks isn't that old. I mean, he I would consider him a vet if good. If Kojo's a vet, he's the vet. If we can just somehow yeah. eliminate him from the picture, Kojo, that would be <laughs> right. fantastic. Like, like you got Bogey and Burks now, like Magruder yeah, and like, I get Magruder. That's cool. He's never gonna play. I don't mind him on the team. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like Kojo, like we don't need that many vets. You're you're all set here. We appreciate yeah. you, but you're we don't need set. that many locker room vets. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we no. need actual players. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm I'm all set. He can uh, disappear. That would be fantastic. Yeah. Speaking of vets, uh, I noticed last night. I tried finding the video clip of it, but I couldn't find it. But they were in a timeout towards the end of the game. And, like, Bogey, as soon as Casey was done talking, Bogey started talking. All eyes were on him. Like, they were locked yeah, into him. Like, he commands their attention. I love well, it. And I love it because I remember when Cade got interviewed when he was playing – like he, they, everybody listens to what he's got to say. Everybody talks to him. He takes command. Like that dude is such a he's great a pickup. Yeah, yeah, I love it. And we a bag of chips. We, we Trey Lyles and Trey Lyles, Josh Jackson, and a, <laughs> and a half a hot dog with yep. no ketchup. That's that's yeah. awesome. And that's being generous. Yeah, literally, <laughs> yeah. You're lucky we put ketchup on the half a hot dog. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's great. So next topic we'll jump into. Um, you know, three years in with those guys, Killian, uh, Stewart, and Bay, who is the best third-year guy? I'm going to let you go first on this Man, one. this is tough. Three weeks ago, it was real easy. Right. Um, is there anyone you think we can eliminate right off the bat? You know, in inconsistency, I, I have to eliminate Bay, unfortunately. I love his game. I love – him as a player, as character, but I'm eliminating him first. That's that. Yeah. That's me. Yeah, just judging off what we're seeing right now this season. Um, yes, yeah, three point shot just completely disappeared. Like, oh. where'd it go? Yeah. Um, I mean, he wasn't. People think he's an amazing three point shooter because he got real streaky at times, but he was never like super great. He was usually no. low thirties. But even that's gone. Like he's shooting, I think, one of the worst percentages on the team. Yeah, it's, um, it's like twenty but, something percent. Yeah. It's All right, terrible. Well, we can quit talking about him. Yeah, I th I'm with you. I probably, <laughs> I probably, I mean, there's we could go on forever, but I'd probably eliminate him right off the bat. Um, you asked me a few weeks ago. I'm probably saying Stewart pretty quick, and the guy's yeah. like twelve and nine, twelve and ten, somewhere in there. I don't know exactly what he's averaging for the year. Um, maybe ten and eight, but um yeah, he's been solid. He's at three point shooting. But now you have you really have to take a look at Killian because even before he took off, there were so many things that didn't show up in the box score. He's always right. disrupting things on defense. Like you yes. may not be getting steals, but like he is locking the best player up on most nights. His Every playmaking, night. like if he had any squad around him, especially um, the beginning of the year when you're playing so bad, like he would have double the assist. And now, oh. now people are starting to hit, and you, you're seeing his numbers like last night he had eight assists. So those are coming up because, I mean, 
a guard needs his teammates to fill that stat. Um, 100%. But now you bring in scoring too, like all facets of the game. He's respectable now. Oh, for like, sure. And that's man. what, you know, I love it. It's, it's, it's a tough one for me as well, but like, I love beef stew, man. I love his game. I love yep. what he does. I love his attitude. I love his leadership. I love everything that he does on the floor. Like, give me that kid. Yeah. 10 out exactly. of 10 times. But now to see like what Killian's actually forming into, like, man. And you know, is this even, is this even a discussion and he's an automatic pick if he wasn't the seventh pick in the draft? He's Let me ask you that. Go Let ahead. me ask you this real quick. To, maybe this will make it easier. If you took Beef Stew out of the lineup right now with this squad, and then after a few weeks you take Killian out of the lineup, like which team is going to be worse? Right. No, it's, it's it, in that perspective. I'm taking Killian all day. It's it, it's just the different things he can do as a point guard in his size, it, he does everything. He literally yeah. does everything. And that's, 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 that's a dream scenario as a coach um, for a point guard that can do all of those things. Yeah. Um, so it's, I, I feel like it's almost an easy one for me. I do think it is Killian. And it, it if the dude wasn't drafted in the top 10, this wouldn't even be a discussion. And we're only talking three different, like, three picks later, if he's picked outside of the top ten. Man, I can't believe we passed on Killian. Look yeah. at this kid go. And it's hard to erase, like, the last two seasons out of your memory. But, like, if you were new to the Pistons and you were just watching every game this year so far. Right. I think you would lean Killian. Oh, 100%. And even and not that it's two- Yeah, not that it's not close, like. I know we're talking a lot about Killian, but Beef Stew's right there, I think. But oh yeah, I'm still I'm still leaning Killian. It's one A one B type of thing yeah. for me between those two. Um, but even like the you know his last two years, he didn't play his whole first year. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so we're just opening the box on the kid. Yep. So he's basically a rook last season, and then you bring in your franchise player who takes his spot. Um, right. For the most part, and then he gets yeah. moved to the bench, and yeah, yeah, a lot to it, but it's fun. It makes it fun. It's 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 cool to see the growth. Um, yeah, I can't wait, man. I can't wait. Can't wait. So the next one we got this this topic's you, man. The in season tournament, man. This yeah, Adam Silver announced this not too long ago. Um, in season tournament this. As of right now, next season, if this passes, he says the regular season starts October 24th, goes till April 14th, and so it'd be 80 game season. Um, he doesn't say when the in season tournament would take place. I would almost assume near All Star break. Yeah, but uh, I honestly don't know how I feel about it. Like, if it doesn't go towards um, your record for the year to get in the playoffs. Like, do right. contending teams really take it serious and risk? Like, are they going to ball out for this tournament and risk injuring their star players when championships for the real on the line? championship? Right. Yeah. Like, I get the scrub teams, but right. <laughs> it'd be fun for them. Yeah, and it, it's one of those like. It's more for like, you know, making the NBA a bigger brand and exciting and TV views. Because like you said, like what what are we gonna get? Do we get a ring yeah. for a midseason? <laughs> that doesn't Yeah, basically. Yeah, Adam Silver's said like eventually in years to come it'll be a pride thing to win. I'm like, like the all star game? Like they yeah. barely take that <laughs> serious and you pay yeah. them. <laughs> yeah. You pay Literally. them literally. <laughs> yeah. And it's one of those, like, <laughs> yeah, that's so true with, like, the All-Star game. Like, they don't care about that. Yeah, it's a, like it's a weekend off for them. That is, yeah. That's their vacation time for a bunch of them. So now they have to play, Yeah. and they don't get a vacation. And what, you're going to give me a participation trophy for winning the midseason? 
And what is it, you know, oh, we'll give you a, maybe a bonus. Maybe that'll entice them to play harder. But you're playing for an NBA championship. It doesn't – For sure. It'll make it fun to watch. I think it'll be interesting if they actually do it. I don't think it's something that'll stick, though. Yeah. Now, something, I don't know, just popped in my head would be cool if the winner gets, like, um, the last pick in the lottery. So what is that, like, 12th pick, I think? Because, I mean, that's an enticement for a championship team. Yeah, we're like competing now. Like, the lottery just, just for winning a few games. Yeah, that's – Something. Yeah, uh, put a little, a I little think, more I think, excitement on it. <laughs> yeah, I think he's got to do something because – Yeah, just a regular – like, ain't going to work. These guys are getting paid millions to yeah, win. They don't care about <laughs> that. And they're and now they play with load management where they can't play so many minutes and yeah. they have to sit out. So they don't care about a midseason tournament. They're going to take it about as serious as preseason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is – Non-existent. G League guys might get some minutes. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> literally. That's awesome. So next thing, it this, you know, you brought this stat to me, and I literally questioned you, and it blew my mind. The Detroit Pistons lead the league in free throw attempts. <laughs> After I told you about it, like I went and re-looked it up. <laughs> like, I was like, I read the article, I read the stat, and like, I was in disbelief. Yeah, like last year, I mean, Cade couldn't get a call, and like we were somewhere in the middle of the pack for free throws. But uh, yeah, first and free throws, Pistons lead the NBA. Hey, and we're leading one the interesting top. thing, I was like, I knew Ivy and Bogey get a lot of calls, so I was like. That's not an, and then I was scrolling through the leaders and they weren't even in the top 20. I'm like, whoa, how are we in first place? Are they so I kept looking. Bogey, in, in this order, Bogey, Ivy, Bay, and Stu were all in top 54 for free throws at times. Dang. Yeah, that's crazy. And that's without Cade playing. Yeah. They, yeah, that's without Cade playing. It's yeah. an interesting, like, that's a very interesting stat to me because I, you know, my brain goes a hundred different ways, but like it means we're playing aggressive. We're trying yeah. to get to the basket. We're that that's awesome. I love that. I mean, it's we gotta have something to be first place in. It's not our standing and our record. So hey, we're gonna take the wins as we can. And we lead the league in free throw attempts. So somebody yeah. say something. I mean, we're getting respect from the refs, obviously, even though right. some nights I doubt it. But <laughs> yeah, some, I, some nights I, it's real questionable. <laughs> I was really actually surprised on Stewart. Like, I didn't notice yeah. he was at the line that much. I mean, he must be, but he doesn't take a lot of shots in the post. No, so he like, just bangs, man. Yeah, he's so down that, there. Yeah, that was, that was surprising. Yeah, sure. that was a that was a very interesting set. Um, yeah, I question you. The first thing you said it, I was like. There's no way. There's no way. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Um, I just want to jump in here real quick. Um, yep. There was reports that Kate Cunningham is donating a total of seventy grand to schools. Um, fifty thousand of it's going to Detroit schools, and he's sending twenty back to Arlington, Texas. I'm like, that's awesome. Yeah, you don't you don't see this being promoted a lot, but that's pretty sweet. And I think. I think Sadiq's in the picture. I think he donated like five thousand dollars in uh, school books or something like that. I don't oh, know exactly. Right. No, but yeah, it was pretty cool. He's it's already cool given that... back, and yeah, he's our leader. That's what you want to see. Well, yeah, and you just want to see those guys giving back to the city like that. It's you know, Detroit is you know some of those areas need help in those areas to build up those schools and get these kids education and just the supplies that they need. So I love to see this type of stuff. You know, hats off to Cade, Sadiq. I'm sure all of them are doing it in some way, sure. shape, or form. Yeah. Um, it's just not it's not talked about enough to me. Yeah. Yeah, for a for a young kid to give up that much money. Yeah. Like usually it's the old heads that have been in for a while that you really see start to donate. Like that. Right. And then I love do you ever see Cade not in a Detroit shirt of some kind? And they're all aren't those like <laughs> a local person that makes I think them? so. I think somebody so. from Detroit. That's yeah, like, yeah I he love is it through and through Detroit. Stay in the city. He loves the city. Yeah, yeah. Cade, you're not leaving, man. I, I know you got some shin issues going on, but you're locked in for life, player. You're our Detroit 
for life. So you need to deal with that, get used to it. Um, and we're going to talk about you. We're going to critique you, but you're our guy. Yeah, we love you <laughs> for sure. So perfect. All right, man. Well, that'll wrap us up for episode eight. Um, look forward uh, to episode nine to be coming out next week. Um, some good games coming up this week. We got some good stuff going on. Um, yeah, man, just give us all a follow. All things Pistons on every platform. Um, we love to hear feedback. We want to hear from you guys. I know we're been talking about trying to get some fans, uh, other Piston fans on here too. Um, so if you guys are checking this out, let us know. We'd love to add somebody on here, talk some Pistons and keep going forward. So that's it.